Hello and welcome to Three Flat Caps and a Whippet. I'm going to get started off by taking you through what we are, who we are, why we're here, all that kind of business. And then we're going to crack on and hit off with that first topic. It's going to be slightly smaller than normal, just obviously because we're explaining the whole point and purpose behind it. I've got with me uh, Luke. Hey, you all right? Hi Luke, didn't think you were going to respond then. <laughs> and I've got John as well. You all right? We are all working in education. I'll, I'll give you a little heads up on what I do first. So I work in Springwell Leeds, up in uh, up in Leeds, obviously. Part of the part of a big academy trust. I work alongside the uh, care teams, care team leaders, supporting with. Sorry, that was bit. just a bit like allow myself to introduce myself. myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good one, man. Anything to do with behaviour, all that sort of stuff. Doing a lot more outreach, all, um, all sorts of different business. We'll move on. Luke, do you want to give us a really, really quick blurb yeah, no about what you do? you can tell, this is quite a laid-back podcast. My name's Luke. I'm Head of Behaviour Support for a large trust. Go around loads of schools, supporting with behaviour and any, anything that they need. Oh, I've totally messed that up. I can't even think about what I do. <laughs> <laughs> I was fine a minute ago. It's and now I'm looking at a microphone in the middle of a table. I can't think what I do. You know what um, else is yes. worrying? What? That you're struggling to think about what you do. Go on. Is that because you don't do anything? You absolute plonker. I do a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, right, yeah, no, sorry. I, so I support loads of schools with behaviour um, in terms of policy, practice, support at all levels, leadership, support workers, going role model best practice. Um, do you have something to do with like trauma informed practice, mate? I do, yeah. Uh, I'm also a, 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 lead, a lead advocate for working with people who suffer trauma and loss. Um, I do various, various things, more of which will come out in the rest of the episodes. Thank Thanks. You. Cheers. No worries, mate. John? No worries. What yeah. are you doing, mate? Uh, John, I'm a strategic senko around SEMH. Designated, safeguarding lead, looked after child officer, yeah, you know, teacher, um, stuff. Yeah, <laughs> also work for a large trust. I'm working more so with the, with the uh, Mr. Mitchell over there doing some of the outreach things, of, of which he, he was supposed to book something next week and he hadn't. So just another little insight into Mitchell. Sorry about that. Classic. It was, it was hard. Hashtag standard. Hashtag classic. Standards. Classic Mitchell. So the whole purpose of this podcast is basically to get us three together we're just going to sit and have a conversation hopefully you guys that listen to this will take something away from it, it came from an idea that I listened to something uh, with a similar structure but I thought it was a really good place platform whatever you want to call it to put ideas out there around all sorts of different topics mental it's health time to check if you've pressed record yeah definitely press record I can see, right. it. I see it moving <laughs> I've got to see the screen <laughs> do you want me to turn it so yeah, you can see there you go there you go We'll take from our own experiences, from our own work lives, personal things. It's called Three Flat Caps and a Whip It, simply because there's three of us. Yes, we are sat in flat caps. Topic, conversation. <clears throat> I'm going to call this one, We Don't Talk Anymore. <laughs> this has come out of me, basically, this weekend. I was out in a local, it's a local pub, it wasn't a local pub at all. I was in a town centre, waiting to go to a wedding. And was getting some food because we've been out watching the Six Nations all day. And and rather a well-known chain of pubs, <laughs> rather than me going and speaking to the human beings that worked in this pub, I chose to download an app and order my food and my drinks through this app. Oh, Jake. And I then consciously, after that, felt really guilty because obviously I'm quite aware that Technology is replacing human connection and people going and speaking to each other. And I thought about how many different things that you can now do, like in a similar sort of process, even down to the fact of paying for things. Obviously, money is slowly being replaced by card, obviously, it's been around for time, but your phone technology in there as well. It made me genuinely feel guilty about not going and. Like self serve checkouts as well. Yeah, it made me feel guilty because I'd not gone and, like, it was almost an easy option. And this, is something we, this is something we talk to people about quite a lot yeah. as well, isn't it? And then you f- find yourself doing it on a weekend. I just yeah, thought, and I, parents and kids. And I know. I, I just felt, ugh, I've, I've been victim of the whole sort of process. It's society, though. It's how easy was it to do that? How easy was it to do that? And it was so quick. We're advertised as well. Yeah. As soon as you walk in, Did you get free for doing it? No, it was, it was, yeah, there was posters knocking about, download this it's going to be like Back to the Future soon where that robot turns up with a Pepsi. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, you know, and then it made me think again about how we'd been, I'd been with a group of people, but at this point it was just me and my partner. And in that time where we were, as a group, there was about maybe five or six of us, everybody, everybody's phone was on the table and like 
person by person you would be you'd be looking at it now I look around the table now oh no all of our oh, phones are on the table Jones is on airplane mode though. I'm face down yeah no I'm, I'm one up on that you're faced up it, it does count to me you're face telling down. everybody else in the room that whatever's on your phone is more important than the people that are on the table yeah I mean I suppose the reason I wanted to have this as a topic is is because it, I found it fascinating and I, I did feel quite guilty about it for mm. not like it didn't make me feel ill or anything but it just it made me think loads about the fact that I've chosen consciously to go to step away from going and using that person as, um, for what they're kind of one of the, their purposes while they're working in that sort of format I don't know if you've had anything similar where you've kind of it's funny it's ironic isn't it how we're promoting having conversations with people and then in our daily lives we avoid having conversations with people which brings me back to my why that, as to why I want to do this my partner the other day she, she slammed a cupboard and uh, she just wandered off back upstairs and I was thinking why on earth has she slammed a cupboard? And I really wanted to just like say, like shout and say, what are you slamming a cupboard for? Do you know what I mean? I didn't. She came back down. And I just, I like, I said to her, I thought I need to, I almost had to force myself into a conversation at this point rather than an argument. And I just, I said, I said, you're all right. I said, just, she slammed the, I've noticed she slammed the cupboard. It was literally like using therapy language <laughs> with the kids. I said, you're right. I've noticed she slammed the cupboard. And she, then she, it sort of, I think me saying that to her gave her the platform to feel safe enough to say, yeah, I was just looking for some pasta and I can't find any. And uh, actually, we had a decent conversation afterwards, afterwards about what happened. Rather than like, if we'd have just, I know like previously in relationships, I've avoided having like conversations, even about simple stuff like that. They've ended up being arguments or somebody's been silent for ages mm. and you just don't talk and you hold on to it for ages. And then eventually it just blows up because it just bubbles up inside of you. And I, and I remember I was stood at the sink washing the pots. I remember forcing myself to have a conversation and think, right, say something, Luke, that's not going to be aggressive, that's just going to be accepting of her behaviour and what she's doing. I sound like I'm doing behaviour consultancy. No, but, but it literally yeah. was like that at the time. I just, I said... There's a reason why we I said, I noticed you slammed the cupboard. Are you all right? And, she, and then she, she, she actually explained what, what the issue was. Yeah. What do you think? I mean... I think that not just technology, but like you were saying about society as well. Do you think it's having an impact because it almost feels easier Massively. to to not be in that conversation? So, like, I mean, I don't know because I wasn't you or your partner in that situation, but I can. I Do you can, know what had been so much easier for me there? Just to, go on Facebook and put a status on saying, "Oh, don't you just date it when people slam cupboards in the house?" And you know, just get loads worst. of sympathy from loads of people on the Facebook. It'd have been so much there. easier for me to do it. But how many people are doing that now, though? But how equally, I'm so mad. Don't even ask me about it. Yeah, uh, oh, ask me about oh, what you're mad about. Oh, another friendship call coming on Facebook. <laughs> 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 I genuinely do think that the world is set up in a, in a way, in a such a way now that it's it's guiding people to make the simpler, maybe simpler or easier choice. I might be wrong. That is avoiding that human interaction. Mm. And this is, I suppose, where I'd use that story to segue into it. So for for you in that situation, if you didn't force yourself to go and have that conversation, yeah, you'd have gone on, gone on your phone or, I don't know, even just, not necessarily on your phone, but even just not pushed yourself to have that conversation. I think that that is coming from the way that the world's set up. And I do think technology has a massive part to play in that yeah. because of the way yeah. that it's set up. I think that our brainstorm was always there. But I think it's just exacerbated by the fact that we don't have to. There's an easier option, isn't there? Yeah, there's an opt out. Have to. That's yeah. it, isn't it? And there's it's an opt out. Rather mm. than before, like, I mean. Have any of you guys got a bus or a train lately? Couldn't think of what was. I got on a train. <laughs> I got on a train. <laughs> but, no, no, I got I'm on not. a train to Leeds a few weeks I'd ago. Walk. And I sat, I sat on the train, and do you know, like, obviously, the titles we don't talk anymore. And I sat on the, t- on the train, oh, and there's God. like, no, literally, mate, yeah. everybody on the train was on yeah. the phone. And I, I again, I went out on my way. Now as well. I went out on my way so, to say hello to the person sat next to me, and she looked at me, and she was probably. Like you're an alien. Yeah, she was probably about in between 30s and 40s. Um, so, obviously, very understanding of technology, and just almost like cringed. Not because it was me that was oh, saying hello. I, I don't think a it was human that. talking. But yeah, it was like yeah. somebody's trying to genuinely have Melting. some conversation. I love getting on bus with my grandma, mate. When my grandma gets on bus, she ain't bothered. She, she talks, talks to everybody. everybody. Yeah, um, it's, uh, yeah, yeah. it's definitely a generational thing, though. But we I don't just, think it discriminates with age, though, because I can be in situations where there's 50, 60 year olds that are just as socially ignorant, mm. if that's the right way of saying it. It's almost like they're just stepping away because they don't want. I have been on a bus. I tell a lie. 
You've been on I've, a bus? I've been on a bus before. Oh, I'm so sorry. Remember when buses used to be 10p? That was, might be a topic for another time. We used to be 10p. Getting an all-day rider to go around Yorkshire, I remember that. Yeah. I, I was in Ireland recently, uh, it was in Galway, and we, we stayed just outside of the city centre. You sing in Galway, girl. In my head, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so just so people that can't see, I was, I was dancing then. Badly. Like and we got the bus in and out of town every day, and... And it, exactly what you see. I saw something yesterday or this morning. I saw a bus stop, and it was it was like eighty percent of the bus stop was on the phone. There's mm. maybe ten people there, but then rather than people being in the bus stop, it was bad weather as well. It wasn't hammering it down, but rather than being like next to each other in this bus stop, they're all like ten yards, like spread out across this pavement because they I don't know couldn't bear to be in that social situation. There's like an underlying thing cause like not cause, but there's a yeah, there's a common thing going through all this though, and it, money seems to be technology though. Technology send it, it's, but it's, it's money, isn't it? Consumerism. Though? Yeah, and then you know because you look at it now, I mean, if you go back ten years, I can't. Remember. You know, if someone said, oh, I've got DVD screens and players in back at car for kids, that were quite rare. Yeah. Now the prices have come down, It's the market's flooded. It's easy. So, yeah, yeah, it, it. And, and now companies are actually offering it. So whereas before it was an aftermarket thing, it's, you know, now you can actually specify it. Yeah, you know, we've, we've, never, I don't, we've never communicated more than we do now, but we've, we're not communicating enough. If that makes sense, yeah, completely the telecommunication agree. devices. We are tweeting. We are. We're doing podcasts. We we're having conversations over the phone, text messages. You can do video conference calls, but like sitting down and actually chatting to somebody, just doesn't it just doesn't happen, does it? it? Very rarely happens anymore. Like I won't even. I've not been to see my granddad for a while, but I know I can just call him yeah. on the phone. So I don't make the effort to go and see him, and it's and it's wrong, isn't it? It's bad. It's uh, does kind of narrow down humans your humans that way. We need to. It does narrow down your friends, yeah. yeah. Which is interesting. When you look on social media, how many friends you've got? I I mean I keep telling myself, I've and I do five. do every now and again go through and get rid of get rid of different people. Got five friends. <laughs> two, two of us just sat round this table. <laughs> two of them were this week as well. <laughs> oh, I'm hoping to double it by now. <laughs> But you think about, I mean, hopefully this podcast will get quite a few followers, but how many of the people that are going to listen to this do we genuinely know? Mm. How many of the people that are going to listen to this or that you've got on your own personal social media accounts, have you met? Yeah. What percentage would that be? And I just I find it fascinating. It mm. is. I, mean, I went through, and like I was saying, I keep talking to, my, talking to myself. I don't sit and talk to myself all the time, just some of the time. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, I keep saying I'm going to go through and get rid of people, you know, take people off that I don't interact with. And every time I do, I go through and I'm like, oh, I don't know. I'm like, oh, how has this got, to- how-, how have I allowed that to happen? Because it- it's it's almost like I've-, I've-, I've grown into having more than I actually know. Do you know what I mean? It's like, that- yeah. that's that's not surely a, a thing that's positive. I don't know why-, why that would be something that, yeah, something that's grown. Into and that's that. it. I mean, because most of my most of my sort of friends, I suppose, on there were, were people who I went to school with. But and, I would say that the majority of them are still people that I either keep in touch with or would like to. So they're always kind of, and because of it, you get like a lack of time with jobs and responsibilities yeah. and family stuff, which isn't, it is an excuse, but it isn't an excuse. But you know, every now and again, I will still. <clears throat> communicate via Facebook on, on, on someone or other social media that yeah. I haven't spoken to for a while and others I will see face to face and I think again that's a, a, a sort of an acknowledgement the dynamic I mean I don't I genuinely I've got more than five friends I've got seven <laughs> but no, I mean I, but I don't have a lot and I think I purposefully stuck to that yeah. and when I when I, you know I, I kind of use social media mainly for um, like the band that I'm in and because and, it's just massive to sort of grow that sort of Thing. So for personally, I don't have that many sort of status updates or this or that. I tend to go on social media more for the band. What? But the friends that I have, I'd, you know, hand on heart, there's probably some on there that I don't speak to, genuinely. But, you know, I'd, all jokes aside, I do think I've kept it down. Yeah. What, I just, I mean, one of the things that clicked into my head then was what did you use to promote the band or to facilitate that sort of thing before social media? Yeah, just demos, CDs, talking to people. Getting out, yeah, you know, you've got loads more gigs, won't you? Yeah, that's that's the thing. What so I mean, be more with yeah, it's so networking with other bands, getting gigs with other bands, networking with promoters and stuff, which you still have to do. I mean, yeah. you, you do, but you know, do you think that's reduced though? Because of the... I think it is reduced. I think it allows me to reduce it slightly. Which, when you've got other sort of responsibilities, like I've said, that's fine. But yeah, 
Yeah. Do you think? Do you think that's come? Do you think it's replaced it positively or negatively? I don't, I don't know if that's the right way to ask you that question. Do you think it's better? Do you think when you were without social media for the band, this is? Do you think that it was a better way or it was more successful get, uh, promoting and and you were in a better place? I think I think now for bands, I think if you're of that age where you've got like. Um, a big group, so if you're at university or you're, you're at school and you've got that big group of friends and you all share it, then you've got, it's more of an impact. But not necessarily, I don't know, not, I don't know whether it's for the greater good or not. And there's all these, I mean, we could do this another time, because there's all these conversations about mm. Spotify saying we yeah. need to pay you more, but then Spotify have just released a thing saying that they're going to pay artists less per stream. <laughs> so it's like, it's ridiculous. But it's, yeah, it's, it's like a, it's the, school, the, school, yeah. the school thing for me is an interesting one. There's a whole, uh, there's a whole. We can again. This is just a little taster session. Yeah. What we're gonna do, but eventually, what we're gonna talk on is is the impact this is having on children in school and their education and their behaviour, their ability to regulate, their inability to socialise as we used to socialise yeah. when we were younger. But this is, we'll touch on all those sorts of things. Yeah, because that conflict episodes. resolution, friendships, yeah, like honestly. meaningful friendships, child and just, just, I mean, have you heard, have you heard meaningful. the guy that Paul Ballington, I think his name is, that does the song when we were kids. He's a Yorkshire lad. Um, He's brilliant. He's talking about like they're doing cap guns, nerf. Uh, they do all sorts of potato guns. Potato guns. Uh, He's talking about all sorts of stuff that we'll, kids we'll, used to we'll do put, when they were we'll younger. We'll put a link on that and actually. Yeah, we'll honestly, and, uh, and then and then I, c- I compare that to children's childhoods today and all the stuff that they're lacking and how much communication they're not having in terms of face to face actual human connection. Mm. Again, we'll look at that in more detail in another episode. But that might be a nice little a link mm. just to stick on there. Unless you guys have got any stories that link into that, you know, I've got loads of stories, man. We've all got stories. Like a library. Um, yeah, I'll finish off on one more on that we don't talk anymore. Just links back into yours. Um, so obviously you were in a restaurant with your partner ordering on a phone. Yeah, I remember being with yourself as well. I don't know if you remember this oh, in Lincoln. God, I know with, exactly what you're say. Yeah, with eight professionals sat round a dinner table. All of us were eating, um, and we're trying to decide whether we should go to the cathedral to whoa, have a look. Whoa, whoa. I wanted to go to the cathedral. Sorry, Jacob All wanted right. to go to the cathedral to have a look, and nobody was nobody was listening. So what? We, what basically? What half of the group? I'd have gone to the cathedral. Yeah. Right. Well, half, we we all we all end up going, but this is how we got there. Half of the group ended up on the phone, and Jacob's trying to organise this thing, this this sort of trip up to the cathedral. And nice and place. Just, if you've never did been. you have an umbrella? You, you always need an umbrella. You can organise that sort of thing. <laughs> People weren't really paying attention in this group, and then uh, a, a lad down the bottom end of the table, one of the lads that works with us, he put in the WhatsApp group. Are we going? to the flipping cathedral or not and uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and everyone in the group responded and we, oh my and we made a plan to go to the cathedral yes. and, and just how shocking is that like eight professionals actually work with we're all sat on the same table as well we're not like in different places wow uh, and, and that. We, so what we, we ended up what we did is we made we made a plan to go to the cathedral and we all looked at each other and, and said you know what we need to genuinely get rid of our technology for this night and just have face to face interactions we all did and actually it was a, it was the best night we had there wasn't it it was really good I rem- yeah I remember like best nights I used to have that in Leeds and stuff I've never a phone in my hand no absolutely and not. people would bump into you or they'd, they'd come find you at you know this bar or that bar or this club because they knew you were going to be yeah, there yeah you were arranged to be somewhere you didn't you know you didn't are you there? Are you, when are you there? Texting people, ringing yeah. people, all that sort of stuff. It makes me think of gigs as well. You know, just linking it back into the band. You go to a gig now, and I know we'll probably touch on it again, like you said in another episode in terms of technology and stuff. But everyone's on the phone, like ev- filming ev- it, not experiencing the moment with yeah. their own eyes. Everyone's oh, I've got a great story about that. Sorry, um, Jack White did a gig in 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 he banned phones, so he, so no one could bring perfect. a phone into uh, into the thing. Well, it perfect for thieves because a lot of cars got broken. Into <laughs> But anyway, so so no, because um, a, a lad that I know Ben who was in band, he, he went to go see this gig and basically they got searched. So it wasn't even like wow. we're saying no to phones and if we catch you a phone, we'll boot you out. They got searched on the way in from That's the brilliant. phones. Jack White was just like, no, if you're going to be at this gig, you, you you're at this gig, you need to be gig. here. I love it. So that was quite a good touch. Slightly behaviourist in his approach, but... All right then, that's about it for today. Feel free to follow us online uh, at Three Whip It. Like I said, get in touch with us, tweet us with any topics and suggestions. Uh, we'll definitely have a look at some of those, and we'll get yeah. we'll get some any links you've got to do. We'll talk as well. Yeah, yeah. You, know, you, you know, tag us in and tweet. It'd be good. Anything that we've mentioned, so like the uh, the song that Luke mentioned, we'll, we'll try and get that linked up on online as well, so you can see uh, see what we've been talking about. Um, look forward to, to seeing it online and seeing your comments and feedback. 
Do you want to just finish off with a little bit of a... Yeah, a little quote there. A little bit of wisdom. A little bit of wisdom. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, Luke's, Luke's I think wisdom. I need some music for these bits here at the end. Okay. <laughs> we'll call it Luke's Line. Luke's, Luke's Line. line. Oh, Luke's there you line. go. Luke's yeah. line. This episode is, the single biggest problem in communication is the illusion that it has taken place. <laughs> Knowledge is the bomb and he thanks you. Thank you very much. <laughs> See you later.